Shana Tova Umituka, a good and sweet new year to you and your family. My name is Michael Fell, and I am the senior rabbi of Temple Emmanuel, and I am delighted that you are joining us for a taste of the high holidays, highlights from the Erev Yom Kippur service. The night of Yom Kippur is among the most special and unique days on the Jewish calendar. We reflect its stature by wearing a talit at nighttime and by wearing white as well. The work of Yom Kippur is challenging. It's difficult because it forces us to acknowledge that in the year that passed, we were not always our best selves. We missed the mark. We did not live up to our full potential. And rather than hide from that truth, we acknowledge it over and over again during the next 25 hours, acknowledging that we've made mistakes in the past so that we can be our best selves in the year to come. As I've mentioned, this sacred work is challenging, and so I offer you five tips to make it more accessible and more meaningful. Number one, if you have it near you, I encourage you to grab Maxor Lev Shalem so you can follow along. I'll be announcing the pages. Number two, I encourage you to try to block out the distractions, put away your cell phone, turn off your computer, so you can focus more intently on what's happening in the screen in front of you. At the same time, tip number three is that it's okay to take a break from looking at the screen. I invite you to close your eyes and fully immerse yourself in the sounds coming from your TV screen. Number four, I encourage you to sing out loud. Fill the space around you with music and with the sound of prayer. And finally, number five, if this feels uncomfortable or different or you're not exactly sure what to do, I invite you to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and reflect on who you want to be in the new year. We begin our sacred work this evening with the recitation of Kol Nidre, which you can find on page 205, and if you're able to do so, I invite you to rise. Page 205. Kol Nidre Oh. 
In just a moment, we will recite Shema Kolenu, where we ask that God hear our prayers and listen to our pleas on this sacred day. After making that request, we'll then remind God of who we are. We will say, Ki Anu Amecha, that we are your people and you are our God. We are your children and you are our parent. These different metaphors describe the relationship between God and the Jewish people, our closeness at this time, and our closeness throughout history. We follow along on page 346. Shema, Shema, Koleinu, Shema, Shema, Koleinu, Shema, 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 Koleinu. Shema, Koleinu, Adonai. Shema, Shema, Koleinu, Shema, Shema, Koleinu, Shema, Shema, Koleinu, Shema, 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 Shema. Oh, 
خودش یا منو خودش یا منو که کده شما شما کردینو شما شما کردینو شما شما کردینو شما 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 moment, we'll continue with the Vidui section of our service, the confessional with the key prayers of Ashamnu and al -Khait. Each of these prayers contains a list of transgressions. It's customary that when we recite these prayers, we take our hand and place it in a fist upon our heart and strike our heart with each recitation of a transgression. Often we think of this act as a form of contrition, but there's another way that we can think of this movement. We can think of it instead of an act of striking our chest, instead as an act of knocking on the door of our heart, an act of trying to open our hearts up to the pain and suffering of others, to open our hearts up to the pain that we might have caused in the past year, and to sensitize ourselves to the ways in which we can be better people in the year to come. Whichever way you think of this act of striking our heart, I invite you to turn to page 235 and join us in the Ashamnu. <laughs> Yeah. 
by throwing off all restraint by rashly judging others by plotting against others through selfishness through superficiality through stubbornness by rushing to do evil through gossip through empty promises through baseless hatred by betraying trust by succumbing to confusion <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this evening's program, and it felt like you were right here in the sanctuary with us. I'd like to thank Cantor Brian Mayer and Rabbi Rachel Zarin, as well as David, Raphael, Daniel, and Jonah Hertzberg Mayer, all for lending their beautiful voices to make this evening so special. We'll conclude tonight with the recitation of Avinu Malkenu. This prayer, which traces its origins all the way back to the Talmud, invites us to imagine God as simultaneously a close and loving parent, Avinu, and also a somewhat distant and disconnected sovereign, Malkenu. These images of God are helpful in that when we recognize our flaws, when we recognize our mistakes, it's helpful to have a loving parent to tell us it's okay. You can do better in the year to come. And if we're having trouble accessing the liturgy, 
if we're having trouble connecting to the seriousness of the day, it can be helpful to see God as Malkenu, our sovereign, and recognize that we have to try a little harder, push ourselves a little bit more to make the liturgy come alive so we can walk away with all of the feeling and emotion of this sacred day. We follow along on page 243 with the recitation of Avinu Malkenu. Traditionally, we don't conclude the morning services on Yom Kippur. Instead, we pause here until we can recite the Mincha prayers a little bit later in the afternoon. Between now and then, I encourage you to continue reflecting on the mistakes you made in the year that passed and who you would like to be in the year 5781. Feel free to go for a walk. Feel free to take a nap as well so you can continue the sacred work on this special day. We'll conclude now with the recitation of Kadish Shalem, which you can find on page 359. <laughs> Oh, you 
Ve'im 